All right, I am here today with Trevor. Trevor, how are you doing? Well, uh, I'm good. I, I, this is the first time we ever spoke, so it, it, I, I, uh, it's really great to talk to new people about ideas and whatnot. Um, people ask me, how good are you? Well, <laughs> I live in Canada, and it's January 2023, <laughs> and uh, Trudeau is still the dear leader of Canada, so I don't know. <laughs> So you're it's just like enjoying all mood. the freedom he can force upon you, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's so much freedom. Huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it tastes so yummy. Well, by the way, yeah. and, and we'll mention this again later, you have a YouTube channel. What is the name of your YouTube channel? It's Pioneer Spirit. And Pioneer you can find Spirit. me on YouTube and Rumble now. Okay. I, I had a little challenge trying to upload. I'm not a technical person, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, YouTube um, and a couple on Rumble, but uh, Pioneer Spirit. Okay, great. It was Social Dilemma, so if you watch some of my videos, I might introduce myself as Social Dilemma. That's when I first started the channel, but I don't know. I kind of thought that's, uh, it sounded kind of negative, but uh, <laughs> anyways, I thought, hey, Pioneer Spirit. I love the the word Pioneer anyways, and uh, so there I go, yeah. Pioneer Spirit. Well well, great. And I can, I can tell from your videos what you've said and, and your introduction that you do live in Canada. Um, have you lived in Canada yeah. your whole life? Yeah, so I'm 50. And uh, yeah, I've lived in Canada all my life. But uh, <laughs> starting in June 2022, I was like, okay, I'm done. I want to get out of Canada. <laughs> and uh, it's, well, even before that, I mean, probably... <laughs> As far um since Trudeau's been leader here, I've never wanted to leave Canada so bad as now. So, um, you know, because he's making life like, yeah, my videos, if you see, I mean, I do believe in like voluntary. Everything should be voluntary. I think I like today we're talking for the first time. Um, nobody's there's no one here but got a gun to my head saying, you got to talk to this guy today. <laughs> so I, I believe everything should be voluntary. Ideas should be voluntarily discussed. If I say something today, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. that's way offline. Like we need to have the discord to talk about these things. But I mean, here in Canada, um, I, I mean, there's so much that uh, Trudeau has done and I've never hated a politician so much in my life. He's just, <laughs> I mean, you look at, um, there's so many built like, a. Uh, so in um, June 2020, he basically started banning all the firearms in Canada. Now, I'm a firearms owner, which is a complete 180. Years ago, I was like, why does anyone need a gun? And, and rah, 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 you know, and, and then I changed my tune. I was now I'm I'm you know, I became a gun owner in 2018. And now all my guns that I've had. So since June 2020, Trudeau is banned. Now handguns are all gone. Um which always surprised me. I'm like, I can't believe Canada actually were allowed to have handguns, but my, yes, I own handguns and I can't take them out of my, they're in, under lock and safe. Every rifle now I own is basically, it's banned. So, so, so I'm and, curious, how did that come about? Like, was it all of a sudden, oh, you guys are still welcome to own them. You just have to have them locked up in your house separate from ammunition. Or how did that come about? Like, just recently or well i mean how did they go about well, rolling out the the changes when it went from oh well okay you so, have something. i mean for years yeah for years and years like we can own guns but i mean it's like we um like i have a um, my semi-auto rifles i can only have five rounds in the magazine uh, um you know handguns you can have up to 10 rounds which i was always surprised i'm like oh they're allowing me to have 10 rounds but um but the rules are very strict here and there's different licensing. I have what's called a restricted license, which allows me to own. Well, I, at one time I could own an AR 15. Those okay. are completely off the table. Now handguns are off the table. Um, any firearm I own now. Okay. It has to be under lock and key. Um, I guess if I die, the police would come and get them. I, okay. they're, they're, they're having, they, they were going to have a confiscation on a little island here, Prince Edward Island in Canada. There's about 200,000 people that live on it. And uh, that fell through. So I'm not sure what Trudeau is going to do with that. But but it really opened my eyes to the fact that, look, freedom of speech and the right to self-preservation are absolute. Uh, just for me, and in Canada, um, we've never had freedom of speech. There's, um, uh, 
So it's just people that speak their mind and then they get charged with a hate crime. And I'm like, no, that's not how it should be done. You discuss it with the person. Now, if that person says, hey, go out and, you know, commit crimes against humanity, the most vile one, murder, you you, you have to deal with that. But just to say a hate crime, and it's like, uh, who who gets to determine what is a hate crime? Yeah. Today, someone, a politician could watch our show and go, I don't like what he said. So he's got a hate crime. So in Canada, they put out all these bills um, uh, saying that uh, uh, the internet freedom of speech is gone. Like very soon, like they have this thing called Canadian content. It's uh, it's like, let's take the radio, for example, like 60% of, of all the music that's played there has to be a Canadian artist. It's like, man, really? Canada's got some good artists, but I, I love, you know, most of the music I like comes from the UK and America. Now there's obviously, you know, I, I like Rush and all that. And, but uh, so, so Trudeau's really ramped up the freedom of speech, taking it away. And, um, and the guns are, are, I don't even know. I canceled my uh, firearm range and I was a range master. Uh, I mean, I went out there and um, I was responsible for, you know, if there's 30 people at the range, I was responsible for, for maintaining that. Um, I guess it was called range master. I can't remember what they, yeah. Range safety officer, was. range master. Yeah. But yeah. And I, I canceled and a lot of the guys were disappointed. A lot of the guys at my range, my gun club are in their sixties and seventies and they're hoping for, they're looking at me at 50 thinking this is a young guy come in. <laughs> and I canceled my, uh, I canceled my gun range membership because I thought, you know what? It's useless. I don't even know if a cop pulls me over. Holy shit. Like he could, they could throw me down on the ground and beat me eight ways to Sunday because if I had got the wrong firearm, that's the thing. There's about 10,000 rifles in Canada that are, uh, that are banned. So I don't even know what I can drive around with. So and, there, uh, and you're breaking up some, there are 10,000 rifles that yeah. are banned. Yeah. Different kind of rifles, like the, the you know, like the, um, different, uh, companies and brands, different variants of an AR-15. They're all banned. Um, and then I to go through the list of what I said, and I said, okay, I've got, a, uh, I got an M14 and I, I went on the list and I'm like, oh, but it's not banned, my brand name. And then sure enough, a month later, I checked the list. The company that makes my gun is now banned. And I thought, if I got caught driving in my car with that, I mean, police in Canada, you know, they're not the gentle beings that, uh, if I got caught with that rifle, in my car, I, I drew the day. I don't know what they would do to me. So I just thought that's it. They're all under lock and key. And I canceled my range membership. Yeah, you know, it's uh it's too bad about the the guns. And and something I'm curious about is is like you're saying live on the interwebs that you own the guns and that you have them and that they're locked under key. So is it still legal to own them as long as they don't leave your property? Or are you putting yourself at risk even saying this on the on the internet? Well, they know, like, I mean, the government, they, they know all, every firearm, every firearms owner in Canada, they know who owns them unless you're, you know, uh, illegally owning them. They, they don't know, but yeah, they can, they can go through every firearms owner. I'm put through a 24 hour registry, every firearms owner that has, um, well, we have two licenses. It's a, a non-restricted, which would give you the shotgun and the hunting rifles. And then the restricted, which is what I have would allow me to have whatever guns that were on the list. Uh, but now, so I don't know. I'm to the point where, um, yeah, they're all under lock and key. I can't do anything with them. I don't feel like I can do anything with them. So yeah, I guess, uh, they want you to hand them in. I, okay. but uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I'm just, it's, it's so up and down here in Canada. And then, um, yeah, gun ownership. It's really, uh, to me, it's it's the foundation of self-preservation. And even my liberal friends here are like, I can't believe you have a handgun. And I'm like, okay. Um, even they're starting to go, why is the government taking away all the guns? Like the, mm -hmm. And I have a lot more, you know, conservative. I, I'm not even liberal or conservative, but e usually issues break down into that. But um, like I have a, a liberal friend who goes hunting. And he's like, I can't. We, we have what's in Canada. I don't know if they have in the U.S. Uh, um it's an SKS. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it fires, like it's a 1950s, like, uh, like Korean kind of war gun. And yeah. we, a lot of people in Canada use that for hunting because it, it fires, okay. uh, it fires, um, 
nine seven six two by three nine yeah three nine or, yeah seven six two point three nine um so it's a good round you can hunt deer at 100 yards i mean that's gone um there's other like my rifles uh it, so it's it's a scary time to be in canada and like i say um covid i don't know if we can even i hate to say that word sometimes you know you say keywords on um they don't uh, promote your videos but the cerveza sickness came around and it's like all free you know it's funny too because in canada we had something called the charter of rights and freedoms it's supposed to be like you know the u.s constitution ah, Every magic time scribbles, emergency. Yes. <laughs> yeah it's like hey fancy words on toilet paper and yeah it's like so so any kind of emergency comes around that was the charter of rights and freedoms was gone and i'm like that's when you need it the most and i'm sure in the states when all these emergencies come around, maybe it's not as easy in the United States to to uh, suspend the U.S. Constitution. I don't know, but you know, it's like that's the time you need it most. And and it, so I always say governments are going to create these emergencies to continue um, keeping us in line. And so it's it's a real uh, sad tale, I guess. I got to yep. tell here from Canada. You know, it's if I want to, there are places. You know, you want a job, you got to be up to date with your, you know, cerveza sickness and, uh, yeah. And so I, and in, in the I United States, uh, government's political jurisdiction where they, you know, have their subjects, um, it's not as strict in most places. Um, you know, I, I think there's, I'm guessing that if you're a federal employee, maybe you have to, uh, have been stuck, but if you're just the typical mechanic working for a private mechanic shop, in a regular town, it's not a it's not a requirement. Now, I know that in in some places like the Socialist Republic of California, uh, Socialist Republic of New York, there are places like that that they probably do have more of those rules. Um, but by and large, yeah, we're fortunate. We're still a few steps uh, ahead behind of you and Australia and um, some of the other places. It's just sad to see, though. Well See, that's why I admire, and it's funny because I, I had looked at, I, I broke down the United States for months. I'm still broke, break down the states. And what I noticed, like in Canada, like if uh, the federal government says, you know, British Columbia, Alberta, whatever province jump 10 feet, they all jump, have to, they have, we are federally, it's um, the collectivism, just it's centralized power in Ottawa, Canada, and the provinces basically have no no power. So during COVID, I noticed a lot of states like, uh, you know, before Biden came in, like South Dakota, the governor, it's a female, I don't remember her name, but she told Trump kind of, oh, stay out of South Dakota. And then Biden came in, she, she said the same thing. So what I noticed was that, um, at least for my take, yeah, in the United States were you know, they were like, nah, we don't want this COVID policies here. And they kind of do what they, they want. Uh, maybe that, that was just my take. So I thought that was real beautiful because here in Canada, I mean, um, I never wore a mask and I tell you, I got kicked out of a lot of stores here in Canada. For not, <laughs> I thought, I said, look at my beard. My beard was actually 12 inches long at one time. This is short. So <laughs> the masks don't fit. And I worked in an operating room here in Canada for years. And those masks that you put on over your ears, it was good for, um, well, I did a surgery one time and the guy's elbow exploded, <laughs> just pus everywhere. And it went on my mask. I can't drop the guy's elbow. I can't drop right. his arm. He stand there. Okay. And then when, when a nurse was able to take the guy's arm from me, I was able to go out and I took my mask off and that's all it did. Like it's, but it's not going to stop the uh, micro sized viruses. And I couldn't, I don't know. Again, I don't want to get us in trouble here talking, but I'm like, damn, like these things don't stop. And then with my beard, they don't fit properly. And then I, I had to buy groceries. I have a, a daughter. She's nine years old. I had to go buy groceries. So I went out to my Jeep and I grabbed an old t-shirt. It was in the back. I used to rub my rims down. I'm, I tied it around my face and they said, okay, you can come in now. I said, are you serious? I got a dirty old rag. It's a t-shirt I use as a rag. And I went in grocery shopping and people were like, that's a good idea. That's better than a mask. <laughs> and I said, and I said, you know, this is when I lived in British Columbia. So this would have been September, uh, 2020. And I said, you know, I'm doing this for a joke, right? And people got pissed off at me. Yeah. And I said, this is the only way I can shop and I have to buy food for my daughter and my wife and myself, obviously. But yeah. you know, I just, they didn't care. And the security guard at the front door, she was, she's like, you, you get out of here. You're, you, you, and 
Yeah. I don't know. Well, the you whole know, thing. So uh, even though it looked like in the United States that Florida, whichever of the Dakotas, maybe Texas, there were some governors that were doing their tough talk. Um, but in, in fact, like the one, um, sanctimonious or whatever his name is in Florida, he's the governor there. And, and then there's the, the kid in, uh, California, the, the Galvin or whatever, the governor there. So Galvin is saying to everybody back in the day, he's shutting down businesses because of the, the pharmaceutical uh, marketing campaign in 2020, 21, 22. So he's shutting businesses down for that reason. And meanwhile, um, the, the California kid, the governor there, he is saying, Oh no, we're letting our businesses stay going and we believe in freedom and all this. Well, now the, the recent thing is this governor ki uh, kid in, in Florida, he's shutting down businesses because they don't have the computer that will keep dark skinned people out who don't haven't done the paperwork, the illegals that will keep them from working in businesses. So both of them, both of these kids completely agree that it's completely okay to shut down businesses as long as it's what this one wants or what this one wants. It just has to be their own personal preference for how they can better centralize, uh, centrally plan society. It is disgusting. So even the ones here that act tough, they are all on the same bad guys team. Unfortunately, it saddens me. I would. Yeah, I agree. Like I'm not uh, like I, I haven't voted this century. So people are like, what? I have not voted in this century. And uh, I just because I'm like, they're, they're all the same. They're all the yep. same. And I know I but I like I did view the United States just for um like, cause my daughter's nine and I want her to have the freest life possible. That's what a parent, yep. that's what I feel my parenting job is. You know, it's my happiness, you know, okay, I'll jump on a truck and be a truck driver. I'd be happy anyways, <laughs> but I want yeah. her to have the financial, I want to leave her with something. And you know, these politicians are not making it easy. And, um, yeah, nope. so I see the United States. For me, it's they are all the same. This posturing, you know, one guy says, but I did look at um, at least like I like the great state of Wyoming. I just I love it. Ah, um, yes. But I I I know. because of the the uh, the Second Amendment there, I'm like that's fine. I don't know how they deal with the First Amendment, but uh, I just I'm the kind of guy. Look, I just want to go and work somewhere. You know, do mind my own business, and I always it seems to me, at least that state, people are kind of like, yeah, just you know, come here to make money, mind your business, don't bring in too much, um, too much. I don't know, progressive stuff, I suppose. But yeah. I'm just like, that's all I want. I just want to get. My daughter loves horses. She's been riding horses since she was four years old. She can jump up on a horse and ride it. I can't do it, but uh, that has stopped. She hasn't been on a horse for three years because. Mm. you know, I'd go to take her for horse lessons and they're like, well, you have to have a mask on. I'm like, she's on a horse. And they're, then they're like, well, now Gosh. is she COVID vaccine? It's all. So my daughter cried and she loves horses. I mean, she tell you anything about horses and then she's going to be 10 this summer. I'm like, I got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, where she can, she wants to, you know what she, her latest, she wants to learn how to drive a stagecoach. So I'm like, you know, she just wants to do, and I know people are like, oh, she's a kid. No, but I, I really, I never had an adult um, ever, ever come to me and observe what I liked. Yeah. Like, you know, I remember That's being the thing I really like and, about the, uh, sounds like you're doing kind of the, uh, the peaceful parenting unschooling kind of attitude where, where the idea is that the parent's yes. job isn't yeah, to unschooling. say, this is what you need to learn today, but instead, Hey, what are you curious about? And how can I facilitate you learning about that? Oh, absolutely. I'm like that. Um, this year we trialed because of COVID. My daughter wasn't in school. So I was like, this is great. Now she's, <laughs> she's gone back for a few hours a day now. I'm trying to get, just because it's hard. To, um, there's just some variants. She, she is trying that, that route again, but yeah. Um, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be an unschooling, um, peaceful parenting kind of guy. And, uh, yeah, there's some sure some benefits to it, and there are, I'm sure some challenges as well. That's 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 for sure. So, well, that's the thing, and and I oh, I was gonna say uh, this is where the, like as when I was a kid, I was interested in astronomy. No adult, and I I love my parents to death, but they never they never caught on to it. I would stare at the windows at night, and 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 I did 
competitions where I'd win science fairs on astronomy. No, adult, not even the teachers would phone my, my mom and dad and say, hey, you know, your kid's interested in this. Or I'd tell my dad, I want to be a truck driver. He says, don't you ever do that. My parents are, they were an age group. When I graduated high school in 1992, you either went to college or university. If yep. you did anything other than that, you were a loser. If you went to a yep. trade school, loser, truck driver, loser. And a friend of mine in high school says, oh, Trev, you got to go get your commercial driving license and be a truck driver. I was like, Wayne, come on. You're a bum. Now I think, <laughs> and, and my parents, um, I, it's such a terrible thing because I think at 50 years old now, I could I could own 10 or 12 tractor trailers right now or, yep. or at least be a, I wouldn't be a company driver. I'm not a very good <laughs> it's my personality. I would be a good, yep. I would be a good company driver if they're paying me well and yeah. getting off of them. You know, don't bug me, but I would have been an owner operator of a truck, but my dad, my parents are against it. Friends were like, you got to, you know, I, I graduated at a time where you were nothing unless you, um, you went to college and I did that route for a little bit. And I struggled. I didn't like school. I hated it. I yep. wanted to be a business owner. And I wanted to my own business. Like I talk about being a gunsmith. I wanted to have my own store. I wanted to sell firearms in Canada. I could have been a gunsmith and a, a, a own a store and be productive, given the government their taxation. <laughs> you know, you gotta, I got to be the, the tax collector. But, you know, like, but they, they hamper me from doing that. And then it's like, well, yeah. okay, I'll be a truck driver. I can make a hundred grand a year. They could collect money on taxes on that. And I'm like, well, they guess they don't want me to do that either. So. Yeah, so I, I just, I do observe my daughter because I was never observed. And I, I go, what is she interested in? Horses, okay? She really loves horses. And she, I tell you, she can jump up on a horse. She'd walk the horse, like in British Columbia when we were out there, lead the horse around the paddock. And um, she, she would pick up the hoof and clean it out. I mean, here's a little five-year-old girl. I'm like, God, that's amazing. Yeah. And we haven't been able to do that. We... um we're in a different part of Canada now where there's not really any horses, but even, even I found a place, um, a ranch <clears throat> that would, uh, you know, teach her more here outside of British Columbia. But, you know, they're like, Hey, you got to put a mask on. And I'm like, what? Like, how's my daughter supposed to ride a horse? And she, I've never put one on my daughter. Good. And, um, I was like, no, Good. this fine. We'll keep her home. And, um, uh, that's where it's at. So then bad. I started looking. We have to live somewhere that's more free because Canada, I'm like, okay, I got to get out of Canada. Now, my uh, little history to your two, like um, all my family lives, my blood family lives in the United States. My my parents, they moved uh, in mid 90s. Um, they moved their business from Ontario, Canada into Michigan and they became U.S. citizens. I was like, well, I remember the day it was 2003. My dad's like, I'm a U.S. citizen now. I'm like, whatever, whatever. I don't care. Like, I'm in Canada and Canada's beautiful. And and why, but, and then my brother, uh, he's been a U.S. citizen. And uh, I, I, I remember one time going to the movie theater with my brother and, and we were talking about firearms and he goes, if anybody comes in here, we're safe. And I said, what do you mean? He opened up his coat and he had a Beretta 92 under there. Um, Bred a nine millimeter, yep. the 92 model, I think it is. Yep. I was like, whoa. Like, I was like, oh my God. He goes, and we started talking about firearms. And here's my brother. I said, how can you get one? He's like, well, I'm a U.S. citizen now. He's like, I can yep. I can vote. And I was like, I was, my parents are so proud of voting. And I'm like, I don't understand how you're Canadian. But now I'm like, I'm my dad back in about 2006 said, do you want to come to the United States? I'll help you. It's like, forget it. Forget it. Canada's beautiful. Now I'm, I'm begging to get in there. I'm, I, I know yep. it sounds weird. I, maybe to, I know there's a lot of stuff that, that you know that I don't, but just viewing America compared to Canada, I fear for my daughter who's going to be 10 soon. And I go, she's not going to have the love of freedom that at least I kind of enjoyed growing up here in Canada. I, you know, like I say, I'm 50. I pretty much enjoyed a free life. Just tell you yeah. since uh yeah march 2020 um i know canada like we're still in this i can't go into a hospital here in canada in october my dog i've never had to go into a hospital thank god i haven't had any complications but i was stopped in october 2022 we had to take our daughter to um the emergency room she fell down we just wanted to get her an x-ray on her hand and the security guard comes up to me you know he's all like uh, because you can't come in here 
And I'm like, what? He goes, you got to put a mask on. I'm like, this is where we're at in Canada. You still have... now. I walked into a hospital last week, and I heard someone say, "Hey, buddy, put a mask on." I just kept walking, but uh, they can't <laughs> arrest me. They can call the police here in Canada still, and I'm like, I don't want to. Years ago, a friend asked me, I, I or I told him, I said, "I'm going to die of one of two ways: a heart attack, or the police are going <laughs> to do something to me. I'm going to say something." Uh, yeah. But, well, um, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, that's where that... It's something that we're all searching for is where can we go to find more freedom or, or, or we're contemplating that. Yeah. And I have looked at Mexico. I've looked at various places around the United States. I've looked at uh, a little bit Colombia, some other places, South America. And it kind of comes down to the governments. And this is just my opinion, obviously, but the, the governments everywhere are bad. They all want to oppress you. Um, some of them are not as good at it as others. And so that was that's kind of one of Doug Casey's things is it doesn't matter what they say as long as they're bad at enforcing it. And so that's something that I really like about my lifestyle now. I'm in the Rocky Mountain area. I've spent time in Wyoming yeah. and Colorado and Utah and Arizona. And, and and there are so many great places there. Colorado, not so much anymore. But there are so many great <laughs> places there. And what I love about the rural areas whether it's there or Arkansas or Oklahoma is that nobody really cares that much to go down this dirt road and then that dirt road and then have to open up a gate and go down the long private driveway. Well, if you're all the way there, yeah, maybe your freedom will last. You'll have a little bit more for a little bit longer, but I'm, I'm not fooling myself to think that two years from now, I'll still be able to buy gasoline if I don't have the central bank digital currency card or account. Um, I know it's coming to an end unless we, unless we all decide to fix things um, or can make that happen. But there is freedom for a longer time in some places. That's, I, I agree that that's true. Yeah. And that's, that's what I've known. Like I've looked at other places like around the world, even Ireland and um, you can be Canadian. You can actually go and work in Ireland. I go, but it really comes down to me is freedom of speech. And uh, the the right to self preservation, and the and the only place on this earth, um, like Michael Malice said it right. He says, "I'm going to Texas." He goes, "If you live anywhere else, you're you're dumb." And and I was like, "Well, come on, Wyoming's not too bad." But no, he's <laughs> like, you know, and I like you know Michael Malice. You mentioned Doug Casey. I know he's in Uruguay. Um, he's living a good life down there. But he's also he. I think he has a home in Aspen, Colorado. Yep, yep in Colorado. And yep. I like him. I really like him. It's like fun. You know, you drop these names. I know him. I like him. Doug Casey. Um, yeah. I just I go where it's not just for me anymore because before my daughter came around, I was like, I don't care. It's just me. If shit hits the fan, I, I can. I don't know. I can take off and do what I want. But now I like my daughter. Like I'm 52, so. So having yep. a nine-year-old daughter is it's 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 challenges in itself being I'm not, you know, most when I drop my daughter off, her friends go, Is that your grandpa? And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> but I am. My my brother's only four years older than me, and he's a grandpa. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I know I, I look like it. But uh so I always think, where can I take my daughter? Not just it's you know, it's my wife, myself too, but primarily what as a parent, I go, where can I take my daughter? And I've really I did narrow it down to Wyoming. People think I'm crazy because they're like, oh, you won't like the winters there. And I go, dude, right now, um, it's minus 13 Celsius right we're, as we're doing this show right now. So that's like, I don't know, minus. Yeah, I'm American. I have here. no clue. <laughs> I just, I'm like, yeah, it's, um, it's cold here. It's, I had to plug my Jeep in. So that's how it wouldn't start the other day. So. <laughs> It's like I'm used to the cold, and and but I I just I go where can my daughter be the most? Where can she be productive? Where people are gonna let her do her thing? And I I thought yeah. Canada's not it anymore. And it's funny, like now that I have a a kid, I'm like I look out for her all the time. Like my parents looked out for me too, but it was just it's a di they're a different generation. It was like my dad went to work made real good money, and my mom was able to stay at home, and she kept the house clean, which did pass on to me. If I were to zoom out here, I'm the one I'm, I'm, I'm primarily, I'm the guy who does the laundry around here. I don't mind doing stuff like that, but that mom, that didn't pass on to this, but she ran the home and my dad went, but they never really, they didn't look at, like, I view my daughter in a whole new way. My, like my dad wants me to get to the United States so I can work. 
Cause I said, can, can you, Oh, here's another thing. So in June, 2022, my dad, he, we are both working on me getting here. I'm still trying to get into the, and it's what, now January, 2023. And lawyers keep telling me, Oh, it'll be eight years. I, I got a friend from wow. Ohio. He said, Trevor jump the border. <laughs> he goes, they'll probably give you an apartment. They'll probably give you the, the commercial driving license. <laughs> and I laugh and I go, how come I, as a Canadian, I, I'm quite, you know, I'm not coming from, I, I, there's issues with uh, people that, that, that I have that just seem to jump into America and they don't, they're not offering anything. Like I say, my wife's been in the pharmaceutical business for 30 years. Um, I can quite capable of getting a job, driving a truck. And again, like I, I would be productive, but we're finding so many roadblocks. And even my dad, dad uh, being a U.S. citizen now, they can't even, lawyers are telling me, it doesn't matter. I'm like, what? I, I, so I don't know. It's it's very it's it's daunting. Again, when I see, um, like, I don't mind people going to America, but I think you need to bring something. And I I, I I'm hoping. Like I call myself pioneer spirit because I would love to bring that American pioneer spirit back as well. And I, I know because Canada's and the United States are both countries founded on immigrants that came over here to try to build a new life. And I can't do that in Canada. I can't do that. Um, the only place I see now is the United States, but I know you guys have problems. I know there's, there's challenges and whatnot too, but I tell you as a Canadian looking at the United States, especially what's happened here in Canada since March, 2020, um, like at least you guys, like if Biden said banning all AR-15s and you can't buy handguns anymore, I, I think there'd be a lot of Americans who'd be like, no, I think that's not going to how, not how it's going to work. Um, Cause we don't have that in Canada. It's a privilege to own a firearm. Like when I buy a firearm, I have to call up the federal police force, the RCMP, those guys are right around on the, in the big red suits. And they'll say, well, what's your firearm for? Well, it's for going to the gun range. If you said, well, it's for self-protection, they, they'll uh, shut you down. You can't buy it. It's kind of a weird, of course, no, so in, in Canada, nobody's going to say, well, I, it's for self-protection. You can't, I can't carry a handgun outside the home. Like when I carry my rifles and stuff, they all have to be under lock and key when I put them in my trunk. <laughs> so I'm like, what is, what is a firearm for? It's, it's for hunting. It is for putting food on the table. It is for sporting events. But it is also for self-preservation. But in Canada, it says right in our constitution, we do not have the right to bear arms. It is a privilege. So, and that's what another thing, not just firearms in Canada, it's a privilege. Everything we do is a privilege. The uh, attorney general for Canada came out. He's the big wig lawyer for Canada. I, I don't know what they, the equivalent in the United States is, but this guy said, yeah, same thing. you don't have rights in Canada. You don't have, he even came out and says, you know, there's no rights to own property. I was like, whoa. And, and what I explained to people, I said, you know, the highest form of private property is yourself. I am, I, I am my own private property. If I don't own myself, then that makes me a slave. <clears throat> so people are like, uh, your property. And I'm like, yeah, I am my own property. So I'm the highest form of private property, the person. And so when a government politician comes out and says, you don't have private property rights, I'm like, man, I got to get out of this country. I got to get out of this country. And and I have, yeah, I've looked around the world and I'm like, no countries really have any um, firearm rights. Like, no, like, that's why I know the constitution. It's like, I didn't sign that contract or anything. And I understand all that as someone who believes in voluntary ways, but I also think at least it's, it's there. You can. It says, hey, you have the right to bear. This is why I can't figure out people in New York City. You should have the right to a firearm the same in New York City as someone living in like a, a small town in Nebraska. To me, that's supposed to be, I don't know, it sounds, as an outsider, I'm like, how come those rights are different? So how come states can have different, like, like you mentioned California, uh, Gavin Newsom and Justin Trudeau here, they're like, they're I don't know. They're, they're very close. They're very yep. slick and they, they love each other's uh, ways of doing things. But uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. That's where I'm at. And, and, you know, Canada's um, if you love socialism, come here. 
<laughs> if uh, people are like, we have, fr- well, here's another thing, like free medical care. I mean, when I worked in a hospital, I started working in 1996 and I, um, I retired in 2016. I was working in the, the biggest hospital in Canada in Calgary, Alberta, and I was in the operating room there. But through that 20 years, I still maintained, I said, you know, hospitals should be privately owned. And people are like, ah. you know, as a Canadian saying, I said, oh, hospitals should be competitive with each other. Like maybe this hospital down here, like as the owner of the hospital, I'm going to go, I want, the, I, I want the best orthopedic surgeon around and I'll pay him a million bucks, but he's going to have to make sure my hospital makes the money and I'll buy him the equipment he wants. Mm-hmm. And people couldn't understand that because in Canada, Social, you know, it's strangers spending strangers' money. It never works, as mm. as Milton Freeman put it. Yes, I like him too. Yes, the four um, ways I'm not to a spend Chicago. money. Yes. Yeah, so, so in Canada, like I just, you know, the healthcare system stinks. And uh, oh, I, I know the point I was going to bring. Like, if you make a hundred thousand dollars a year in Canada, about twenty eight thousand dollars goes to healthcare, whether you use it or not. And and um you can give me more insight into that. I've been asking Americans. I'm like, okay, if uh, I were to pay $28,000 a year for healthcare, what, what would I get? And they're like, you get the cream of the crop. Like I have, like my dad doesn't even pay that. Now my, my parents did really well for themselves. My dad's like, I don't pay $28,000 for your mom and I, and, and they have great medical care. Um, my dad has nurses and doctors come to his home. He goes, that's how good it is. And it's not busting them. But like in Canada, you pay, yeah, you make a hundred grand a year, 28% of your income just goes to healthcare. And I'll have mm. liberals go, yeah, but at least they don't spend much on military. I'm like, well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, it, it, you know, I, I always ask people at what percentage are you comfortable having your money taken from you, whether you like it or not? Like, it's not voluntary to me to, so I'm like, I don't get $28,000 worth of healthcare every year. Um, yeah. That's for sure. And I worked in a hospital. And I can tell you that that's, I, they're not great places here in Canada. Yep. Well, and things can be advocate. done for so much less. If, if you get a handful of skilled people, uh, a, a nurse and a doctor and a receptionist, and you, you get the ha- same handful of people, well, they could very easily do things privately, especially if the government didn't support the, the theft system of lawsuits. Uh, if things were reasonable and rational, it would be so easy to say, yeah, I've got a very serious issue and I, and you're going to have to spend a, you know, two hours working on me and you should be making a thousand bucks an hour. Well, two hours worth worth of a surgery are way more than 2000 or $3,000. Um, and I understand the overhead. I'm a business person. I understand the overhead of the building and, and the insurance and, and all the other things. Um, but okay, 4,000 bucks for a two hour surgery. That makes sense. If you want really good work done, but the truth is that surgery in the United States would probably be twenty or fifty thousand dollars, and it could be done so much better by the free market. I'm, I'm sure of it. If the government wasn't in the middle of the the medical industry, trying to be the the boss and the referee and the the thief of it. Well, exactly. Because I mean, you, know, you add in all the bureaucrats and the administration, and this is why I'm an advocate. Uh, I'll give an example. I had a root canal in 2007. And they said, well, what's your insurance company? I said, MasterCard. <laughs> and the, the dentist goes, oh, okay, uh, I'll give you what the value of what it's worth. So I got a root canal. Um, I got another filling. I got a full cleaning. And she charged me $740. Oh, great. I said, okay. Now, what what would that have been if it, what would if I had an insurance card, what would you have run that under? She said, I would have made 1400 bucks easy. And I said, that's the problem, with, with, especially with the medical system, just to, with any system that is involved with insurance and government and everything, that you just jack it up. You're not getting like, and she gave me the, the, the top work. She goes, I'm going to give you the same amount of work, but you're giving me, um, I paid on MasterCard or I gave her cash. It was 740 bucks. And she said, yeah, easily I could have charged 1400 on your insurance. <laughs> I said, that's the problem. I said, that's what they do in Canada. They just, you know, whatever, charge whatever. Yep. And yeah. Yeah. Ethetist here in Canada, I know for a fact, you know, each case they're making a couple grand and are they worth it? Sure. I, I, if someone's putting me to sleep. I want to make sure yeah. that I wake up. <laughs> yeah. It's, but uh, yeah, you need, and that's the thing I always said, I, I always said to the doctors, I said, if I owned my own hospital, like I would, I would do the very best to make sure I, I'm paying everybody what they're worth. Um, 
you know, and, and then unions come into factor. The hospitals are all unionized. I had no option. If I, you know, you want a job in the hospital, uh, you know, you had to be in unions and, and then that, that, you know, we go on about unions. And I, I like an in-house union, but when you get like a big unions across that have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, they, they now have become the conglomerate that they're supposed to be fighting against. Yeah. So that's a problem in Canada. Um, you know, and the amount of government employees, uh, Trudeau, I, I think that uh, Biden hired 87,000 IRS agents. I think that was the thing. Yeah, I heard, I heard well, Trudeau, in the entertainment about that. Trudeau just hired 33,000 um, um, revenue agents, uh, CRA, Canadian Revenue Agency. It's the same as the IRS. And I thought he just hired 30,000 more of those people. I thought, man, like, you know. Yeah. They're hiring more government the, employees. The crypto solution is a great solution so long as people have the guts to use crypto. And I, and I keep thinking that crypto is so much like it's the perfect solution to government's taxing unless right. you want to keep having a regular lifestyle. So it, just like cocaine has great value in the United States, as does a Bitcoin. Um, so if you have $24,000 worth of cocaine and $24,000 worth of Bitcoin, those are both valuable assets. The challenge becomes do you have the guts to go out and say, "Hey, anybody want to buy half of a half of my supply of cocaine? Hey, anybody want to ha buy half of my Bitcoin?" As Canada, United States, and other governments in upcoming years, as they really clamp down on real money, digital money, I see that becoming a huge challenge. Of yeah, that's great. You got a bunch of that thing, but do you have the guts to trade it? And that's going to be a question well, we each have to answer. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about the, the CBDC, like the central bank digital currency. Now, I've heard some people say, oh, it's, it's not going to come in. But I'm like, if it does come in, we're screwed because now I can't take out $1,000 from the bank and spend it how I want to. If I want to go buy bubble gum, it's nobody's business. You know, it's nobody's business. And the cashless society is even though I'm not I'm not for fiat currency, the government controlling it, at least you have some kind of autonomy with your money. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when it's a digital current, like okay, like um for a perfect example, the truckers convoy that happened here in Canada. And God, yeah. I went to that. Okay, I drove down the highway with the truckers for an hour and I pulled over. I got a good video. It was uh, it was damn cold out that day, and um <laughs> I, I supported them. Now I could have had my bank accounts frozen because Trudeau came out and he declared martial law. They call it an emergencies act. But what it was, um, it gave the government um, the power to people's bank accounts were shut down. And I'm like, okay, now with central bank digital currency, they have the power to shut that down anytime. You know, they watch uh, my video and go, Trevor, you're being fined 2,500 credits. And I'm like, oh, how do I buy groceries this month? Like, it's it's really easy to control people because, I mean, everybody wants to eat. I would like to eat. But at what point <laughs> do I go? Uh, what what point do I go? I, I got I can't I got to just close everything off and and yep. accept this digital currency. I mean, the you know, they they shut it down in Canada. There was banks um, shutting down people and all of a sudden you can't buy a mortgage. You can't buy groceries. And these were people that just donated maybe 20 bucks to the, uh, the truckers convoy. It, it wasn't a, tr they called it a freedom convoy here. And like I say, uh, Canadians got some mighty balls of steel and, and it was great. Like, I mean, I went, I drove down the highway and had all these big rigs and I'm waving and it was just a great time. And, um, but then Trudeau shut it down. He declared martial law. Uh, he locked down, Oh, that they were, um, Canadians are protesting at the Windsor Detroit bridge. And there's billions of dollars in business that goes across that bridge every day. Um, they weren't blocking it either. They just stood on the sidewalk saying, you know, end the mandates. And yeah. the boys in blue came along and they they grabbed people and, you know, you know, like, do you want to be arrested and go to jail? And people are like, no. And that's like the Canadians. We all like they went home. Um, I didn't get right up to Ottawa, but that's, um, the truckers like we got home because the, the police were going around smashing the windows. I mean, if there was any violence that happened at that Ottawa protest, it was it was from the government, and 
truckers mm-hmm. were like they went home it's kind of because they're like we because the next level is like you know 1776 kind of level of you know i guess that's where it would have to go but uh canadians but and what i'm illustrating is how easy it was to control people with a cash with a cash society i say imagine now you have a digital bank account and the government whoever they push a button and says you're now your bank account has 2500 credits gone or you're fine this or uh, and and the thing is i every anything you buy with digital currency a government digital currency they know like you know yep. um you talked about cocaine earlier i'm like you know you, anyone who, who's addicted to that they're not getting that how are they supposed to who, who's going to take digital currency for that i so it really it's going to create a system of uh i don't know what's going to create um like i'm a guy i love gold and silver um I like yep. the physical money. I like the cash in my hand. If if it's not in my hand, I don't own it. Um, and I don't have digital. I can't hold a, a ones and zeros in my hand. So, yeah, that central bank digital currency. Um, now, I don't believe in someone. I I personally, I don't even drink. I don't drink alcohol. I don't do drugs. Like, But if you want to do that, well, I guess that should be up to you as long as you're not hurting anybody else. Um, and if you do, then that has to be dealt with. And, uh, but it's the action that you, you took that is the problem, yeah. not what it's blamed on, you know, cause we could blame yeah. the, the person who goes nuts and beats somebody up. You could say, well, it's because he was high on cocaine or he's high on Zima, or it's because he had a bad childhood or it's because he was born a white male. And I hate those people, but it's because he was born like yeah. that, whatever it is. Well, which of those four things was the reason? And I think that's why we can't look at the reasons that might be behind something, uh, the social planners, the central planners try to say, okay, if those four things are the things that most frequently cause people to punch other people, let's go back early in their lives and engineer society and human beings so that the punch never happens. And I just think that's a, a it's not a way for free people to s- organize themselves. Um, and it's, it's frustrating that most governments are doing that. Well, exactly. Um, I mean, I don't even know how to live. Like I tell people, I'm like, well, people are like, how do you live without government? Like, how are you going to, the people would just be, it'd be anarchy. Ah, the like movie, the purge. And I'm, I'm like, yeah. well, we've never actually tried that. But I said, you know, on a daily basis, most people do live voluntarily. Um, nobody's out. I mean, if you need government, I'll say if you need government laws to live a moral and ethical life, is that what's stopping you? Like if the government was gone, now you're just going to go out and, and be over the head. I don't think that's going to happen, but it, um, it's difficult. Yep. I know these are difficult questions and I get, I still think about it. And I've been thinking about these things for 20 years. Like how do I, how do I live a voluntary life? And um, yeah, I just, just, if we're going to have government, like I also, I made videos too saying, you know, Okay, let's base it on the U.S. Constitution. Have someone just voluntarily step up and say, "Okay, I'll I'll uh, make sure that I guess everyone's living by this." And if someone wants to voluntarily pay me five bucks a month to to operate the U.S. Constitution, I guess so. And and have government be a volunteer organization, but it can't operate like that. Um, yeah, what? And be lately, I'm thinking it? too, government. The government in peaceful times, people are like, "Why do we need government?" That's why government always creates war. Because the, the, they have a war on the economy. Like um, we, you talked, you mentioned earlier, you know, businesses during COVID. Well, you know, if you owned a little mom and pop shop, you were closed down. If you owned an independent grocery store, you couldn't, people could come in. But I could, now here in Canada, I say I got I got kicked out of a couple grocery stores, but most of them were open. Like your your Walmart super stores, we got them here in Canada. Um I only had problems once with a security guard. He just said, you can't come in here without a mask. I said, nah, I'm not wearing one. He goes, okay. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I think they were told if someone said no. So I, I was still for the most part able to do it. But if I wanted to go to like a little grocery store or convenience store, you know, it was a death. It was um, a war on small business. Yep. And you know, <laughs> you know, guys like, oh, of course I ordered a ton of stuff from Amazon too. Cause I'm like, you know, I need stuff from the hardware store. Um, I had I had employees around me at a we got a place here called Canadian Tire, and there was a guy out in Vancouver who got choked out by an employee, 
because he was walking through and he says, I don't want to put a mask on. So, you know, there's stories wow. of that. I was, I was surrounded by about five teenage employees and I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm looking at them. They're like, you get out of our store now, unless you put a mask on. I said, I'm not putting one on. I said, I'm just here to get some plumbing equipment. And I had to order it on Amazon. I went home cause I said, I'm out here and they follow me. And these guys, I'm like, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm like, you guys really don't want to, don't push me. But I, I look and go, these are five guys, you know, teenage kids who probably could put me on the ground. Yeah. I'm thinking. And I'm, either way, I'm if like it's on old, private property, you're going to do what they say. You know, I mean, it's up to them to make, to agree to stupid well, laws, but to be, to use that threat of violence, that doesn't seem good. Oh, well, and you know, the store manager came out and told me to leave. And anyways, I looked like a freak because everyone was wearing a mask. I swear to God, I was probably one of the only Canadians that, it was an it was an amazing how many people wore that and they're still yep. wearing it here in Canada. Yep. I saw a guy jogging down the highway in the summertime on the highway with a mask on. I'm like, what, what are you doing? You're, you're yep. People drive around in their cars still with a mask on. Like you're Alone. in a car by yep. yourself. <laughs> I don't know if they got that in the U.S. But oh yes, Canada, oh yes, we have voters here too. I call those kind of yeah, people voters because the voters. word uh, st stupid is kind of offensive, so I just call them voters. So. <laughs> zombies yeah, yeah that doesn't, like yeah. That. yeah voters yeah it's um yeah i don't well, know is there any good news what do you see at what michael malice calls the white pill uh what yeah. good news do we have how can we as people and you and i haven't talked about everything we never could but if we came up with a hundred different topics i'm sure we would disagree on five or ten at least but sure. for the most part, we'd probably make pretty darn good neighbors. What do people like you and me who want more and more freedom and more liberty, what do you see as, what can we each as individuals do today, tomorrow, next week to bring about more of that in our lives? Do you have any ideas well, for that? I have a philosophy. It's called KISS. Keep it simple. Stupid, I guess. <laughs> if you wanted. But I always tell, like I tell my daughter, she goes, how, how daddy, how do, cause she'll ask me, what's the most important thing in, in that matters to you? And I say freedom. And she says, well, how do we obtain that? And I said, well, you'll mind your own business. I said, you mind your business. I'm, you know, when you're an adult, like, cause she's like, uh, why do you, it's different than when you have a parent, a kid, you're, um, I got, there's times where I just have to tell her, you got to go to bed. And I mean, you just, you know, you can't stay up till 2 AM and uh, daddy can't either. I'm too, I want to be bed, by nine. <laughs> but I, I like mind your own business. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Just like you go about your business. Like I would like to be a truck driver right now. I will do, you know, if I was a company driver, I'll do what I'm, I'm asked. And you know, if I'm asked to do things that I don't want to do, then I would I quit. I want to own my own business. I don't want to hurt anybody. That's the thing. It's just mine. It's real simple. Like mind your own business. Don't get into anyone else's face and, and tell them what to do. And that's what voting is. You talk about voters early. It's like secretly you're, you're saying, well, I don't like what my neighbor's doing. So I'm going to vote against him and the red team against the blue team. And so I, I just, I talk about, like I tell my daughter, if it's not voluntary, it's crap. Like, I mean, <laughs> if it's forced upon yeah. you, like, like a, at school, she, you know, um, uh, she was going through this thing where the teachers like, you have to share. And I tell my daughter, I say, I tell her it's, it's really good to share, but you have to be voluntary about it. And she, so I talked to her about that. And I said, look, if, um, you want to, like she has friends over and she wants to hide some of her toys. And I said, well, you can, but if you're going to invite someone in your house, you, you have to share your toys. It, and, and if you don't want to, then the kids aren't going to come back. So I'm kind of like, you have to do it voluntarily. You can't force someone like at school, you know, at school they're, you know, it's like, you have to share that toy now. It's like mm -hmm. people aren't, they don't like being forced, but I say to her, it has to be a beautiful thing. And for me too, I'm like, if I want to volunteer my time or my money, like it feels good to do that, but don't force me. If, if nobody wants to be, if, if you have a million dollars in the bank, you don't want to share it, go ahead. You don't have to, you don't have to share your time, but, but I do try to instill that and my daughter and myself too, it's still thinking yep. if it's not voluntary, then it has to be done by force. And, uh, you know, my, like my daughter's getting it. She's, you know, she's like, okay, that makes sense. Like, you know, don't, don't force like sharing. I hate that word sharing unless it's done voluntarily. It's, yep. it's not sharing. It's, you know, it's, it's coercion, it's force. So 
that's just, you know, I, I try to spread that word and, and, you know, I think everyone, it's funny. You talk to most people and they get it, but then they just get back to the point of, well, you know, we, we have to have government to do this and that. And, and I'm like, okay, if we are just, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't boggles the mind on how to get people, but I, I would like to get just people starting to, um, almost ignore the politicians. The politicians say, do this. And the group of people look at them and go, yeah, whatever. Like, yep. you know, we're, we're going to like, that's why I, I don't like the social contracts, but I do talk about the U S constitution. I think if someone could just, if we could just voluntarily live by that, I suppose that's, that's fine. Um, yeah. Unless you're, but then again, I know I go back to the, the I don't like social contracts. Uh, you didn't sign the constitution. I didn't, I didn't sign the charter of rights and freedoms here in Canada that was imposed upon me by Justin Trudeau's father, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, who, by the way, we've had two bouts of martial law in Canada. The first one was brought in by Pierre Elliott Trudeau in 1972. He declared martial law and then his son declared it again, just this uh, a year ago. So I just thought I'd point that out too. I'm yep. like, and these are supposed to be liberals that they were the liberal, you know, whatever. And you know, you know, it's anyways. interesting that people, if I think if you ask the typical person, whether they live in a city or out in the country, if you say to the, the, the average person, I, I'm, I'm thinking of one of my neighbors in particular, old, old man rancher. If I said to him, what, what do you think about those gay people? He goes, and then if I said to him, well, if there was somebody gay that lived down the street here that you knew about, what would you do? And he said, oh, they can do whatever they want. Well, basically what he's saying is, what you were saying earlier, I'm going to mind my business. I might have a preference. It might be something that you find to be distasteful. You might think that I'm a bigot or, or homophobic, whatever, but I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to actually take any action. I'm just going to, when I'm delivering Christmas cookies, maybe I'm not going to stop at that house. Great. Now I know what you stand for. I disagree with you, but I know what you stand for. And that's just fine. And I think that if you ask this neighbor about a lot of different questions, Hey, you think if somebody goes out and makes some hundred bucks and brings it home, do you think they should be able to keep all hundred dollars? Or do you think people should have a right to steal part of it? Well, no, if it's their money, they should keep it. And I think we could ask a bunch of these questions on economics and freedoms and everything. Most people, I think, are what today would be considered socially liberal and fiscally conservative. Yeah. Most people yeah. say, hey, that's a good idea. I think it's when we try to put all these labels and names on them that we kind of, we lose the one big overarching thing that most people also think tyranny is okay. And tyranny, as we've learned from the kid in Florida and the kid in California, it, it, it infests both si alleged sides of a political argument and it renders everybody kind of a piece of crap. Well, exactly. I mean, mind your business. That's all I tell you, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, mind your business. Yeah. Just let someone go about their life and uh, you can't, <laughs> I just, the government is the exact opposite of that. So, but people yeah. are like, well, who, you know, and then you get the argument, well, who's, oh yeah. I've had people say, well, you'd enjoy driving on the roads, you know, the, the road yeah. argument. And I'm like, yeah. Hey, look, um, if someone like Elon Musk can build, you know, a cyber truck, which I love, but I wouldn't, you know, anyways, that's another subject. <laughs> but, but I mean, if you can build like a Mustang or a Camaro and put that on the road, I'm pretty sure I could maybe build a road and give me some instruction, but I've always maintained too. There's another, I'm like, well, who are you going to drive on the road? I'm like, yeah, you could drive on my road. You don't like my road, go on someone else's road. I want to privately maintain it. I just did a video on winter driving and I'm like, like, you know, the police forever will come out and say, well, it was driver fatigue that caused this pile up. And I'm like, they never come out and say, well, the government doesn't maintain the highway. Right. And, and I, like I ditched my Jeep, like I'm 50 years old. I'm going to drive like you're, what it's like driving on a, a winter highway and i ditched my jeep one time but the whole road looked like a washboard and my wife was sitting beside me i said we're going in the ditch i got a studded winter tires um I, I think they're great i used to have them in british columbia and you know it just looked like spikes coming out of your tires but it, it didn't matter my jeep went into the ditch and i thought you know what like who it looked like they hadn't plowed the highway in 12 hours i thought then they're, yeah. they're not putting anything i i tell you just 
the roads one is a real big issue, but people will say, well, how can you, you know, how are you going to get your health care? How are you going to do this and that? And I'm like, private free market. Yep. Like I would private free market will all, there's always going to be someone out there that will say, I will supply that good and service. And someone, and if you don't do a good job at that, guess what? You go out of business. Yep. But I like Walter Block's test, right? He says, oh. if it's, uh, if it moves, privatize it. If it doesn't move it, privatize it, privatize everything. I think that's well, a, a very good test. God, you've been bringing up some good names. I, as soon as you said that, I thought defending the undefendable yes. from Walter Block. I love that series. Yes. I haven't listened to it to, since, uh, well, God, a year from now, but I, yeah. I love that. If anyone's listened, defending the undefendable, it will blow your mind away. Yeah. Cause he's like, yep. he'll talk about, um, just anything, police, and anything landlords and yeah, it, it's a great series. Um, yeah. And I like the other series. You just to, to add to that one, was Murray Rothbard's um, Liberty series. Like he'll talk about. I think it maybe it was either um, Murray Rothbard or Walter Block that talked about Serpico, like policing. Um, they probably both talked about it. But I'm like, you know, once you you introduce a free market, like a policing, like that poor fella. I don't know. He just uh, Tyre Nichols or something in the United States just got beaten to death by five other cops. Uh, there's another thing. Please, I go on. My God, we're going to have to do more shows on this. I've enjoyed <laughs> it. Like I go on for about policing and I say policing should be voluntary, a, a voluntary run organization because there's no accountability when the police, the courts, the, the prison systems are all on the same side. There's yeah. no accountability. But I go, like, if, I, if I'm in Canada, if I'm able to carry my own firearm, I'm my own police officer now. Like I say to my, my daughter, asks questions like, well, what if someone comes into Walmart with a shotgun? I said, you know, we're going to have to duck and hide. Meanwhile, I go back to the story, but when I went to the movie theater with my brother, and he said, if someone comes in here, he goes, there's probably 15 other guys and gals in here with their own firearm. I was like, what? Yeah. Nobody, he said, nobody's coming into this theater because it's it's a gun zone. Wherever there was it was. A, there's a great book. Have you read Mulan Labe by uh, Boston Tea Party? No, no. So it's a fictional book taking place in your favorite state of Wyoming. And the <laughs> this fictional governor that came in uh, imposed for the first time a state income tax. And he said, but you don't have to pay it if you're a man and you qualify each year with a 308 rifle or you're a woman and you qualify each year with a 223 rifle because then there's not as much need for us to do your defending you'll take care of it yourself and right. there was something about sales tax that if the clerk looks at you and you're wearing a gun on your on your body you're not charged sales tax cuz you're taking you're kind of taking responsibility and solving the problem so i think some of it is fictional but some of these ideas they make such good sense like yeah, yeah that that makes good sense we need to be our own police. Mm -hmm. Like that's why I come back. Like, you know, be uh, the right to bear arms. It should be worldwide. It should be worldwide. Like in Canada, I can't. You know, my people are like, oh, you're crazy. Nothing's gonna. Like I said, anything could happen. Anything can happen. And I, I, I'm not. Um, I'm not 25 anymore. I'm not throwing fists around. I don't want to do that anyways. I should, you know, I should have the right to protect my family and myself. Mm -hmm. And we can all be police officers. And, and, and if you want a police service, well, pay for it. Because yep. now you're going now you're going to be held accountable. And this is why I don't like unions either. Don't I don't want unions. I don't want um a monopoly on policing. Have a private policing. And if they screw up, they're fired. And there's no pension either. Like in Canada, you you get fired as a police officer, they don't touch your pension. See, some of these guys are gonna make 80, 90 grand a year. They're making more money than I am with a pension. And they sit back and go, oh, well, you know, you can't touch a, a police officer's pension. I'm pretty sure it's probably the same in the U.S. Well, if I were, if I owned a policing company and you beat some guy to death and it, it was proven that, you know, this guy was turtling and, and you shouldn't have beat him, you're fired. You're going to be held accountable in many ways, but you're not going to have a pension. Yep. I don't like pensions either. I've always maintained, give me the money. Let me... In Canada, we have the Canadian pension plan, I guess, a social security in the United States. Yeah. And uh, to which my dad and I have had debates on this before. He's 80. He's like, don't you touch my pension. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, I said, dad, over the years, you've paid so much money. Wouldn't you have rather had that money on every paycheck? 
And my dad's like, well, yeah, because I could have, my dad's, my, my parents are amazing with money. And my, my mom's like, yeah, I wish I had it. But now that they're old, they're like, well, it's nice every month, you know, um, to collect that. And yep. I guess I know I look at my dad and he's a very frail man now. And he does, they don't, I don't, I'm like, you don't even really need it, but, uh, they get yep. it, uh, because they, they were entrepreneurs or own their own billion dollar business. So, you know, it's interesting. Or, but, about but I the... say, but I say to people, I say, even over the years, like if you had that extra five, six hundred dollars a month, which is probably all about social pension plans are, anyways, wouldn't you have rather had that money to invest? You could have bought, like right now, if um, like five hundred bucks in Canada will buy you about fifteen ounces of silver. I go, I'd rather have that every month because at, um, two years from now, like it's happening right now, fiat currency is just going you know, the way to the dodo bird, if I had taken that fiat currency and I do too, I got tons of silver here. I got, it's all behind me on here that at least I could turn that silver. If I had to get the fiat currency back again, I'm, you know, the amount of money I spent on silver a year ago, I could get that money back. So, yep. but Hey, um, that's just my take on it. I guess I'll just yep. let the government invest it. And then you look at what the government invested in. I mean, you know, they, they, it's like, you know, they, the companies that they invested in are worse off than, than me. I mean, you'd rather, I go, you'd be, I'd be better off going and buying hockey cards, which I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I, invest, I mean, you'd be better off. So yeah, I don't know. There's so much yeah. policing. Oh my God. We're, we're going to have about 10, at least 10 yeah. more shows on just. There's so much going on that's wrong in the world. And I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be stoic and say, okay, I see something, there's this obstacle in front of me. Can I fix it? Is it something that I can fix? If it is, and I'm willing to do what it takes to fix it, let's get on with it and bust butt and make this thing happen. If it is not something I'm willing to fix, then I need to completely put my energy elsewhere and say, nope, I, I can't fix that this bureaucrat and that bureaucrat are going to do this with that central bank. Can't, can't do anything about it. So what can I do to make my life richer, my grandchildren's lives richer? What can I do to make the world as I see it, my subjective values, what can I do to make the world a better place? And it's so tough to stay positive at times, but that's sure my goal is to be that, that stoic positive dude. <laughs> well, Exactly. And yeah, what can you do? I've been asking myself that question. Um, well, what's that saying? Uh, I came, um, in, oh, I don't know. Necessity is the mother of invention or something yes. like that. Like yes. I've been really, yeah, something like that. I've been thinking about that for years. Like again, we've had politicians in Canada and, uh, oh, I'll go, you know, it's like, you know, they haven't really bothered me too much, but Trudeau, um, has really gotten me thinking, I got to do something for my daughter. And, and again, like, what can I do? And I, I'm, I'm like, I can't be a gunsmith. I can't be a truck driver. I can't work in a hospital again, unless I go and do what they tell me to do. And it's like, yeah, you're right. Like, what can you do in, in my little world here? What can I do to make it better? And I, don't know, I keep trying to teach my daughter, like just live a voluntary life and don't hurt yourself and don't hurt others. And that's another, like we teach to don't hurt anybody else. But I also say, to my daughter, well, don't hurt yourself either. Like if, and if you are hurt and come to daddy, and I will, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll try to do whatever I can, you know? Yep. It's, it's hard. Yep. It's hard. It's, uh, but yeah, how do I change just, I guess, you know, change my life in just my own little community talking to my neighbors. Yep. Um, you know, and, and like I say, I talk to my neighbors and most of them, you know, they're all like, I can't believe I have to have, uh, this and that to, to work here. And yeah. um, it's, yeah, it is. Yeah. And how can I, cause like, well, you know, I can't, um, how, how can I, and it feels it's terrible. Like I never in my lifetime, I, I never would have thought I'd be in a position where I can't go get a job. And I'm yep. limited to do what I can do as well. I mean, I'm 50. I'm again, I'm not, don't put me out to pasture yet, but I, you know, just, you know, Trudeau saying you got to have this and that to, to have a job. And it's like, okay, maybe I could go work. Like you mentioned earlier, there are smaller businesses to, you can work with, but um, I'm kind of limited. Like I can't, like, I don't want to go work at Walmart. I don't want a minimum wage job. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, <laughs> 
I just want to earn money. I wanted to be, I want to have my own business and it's really tough to do that in Canada. And yep. I get back to the uh, good old America. And I'm telling you, um, like my, my parents, my mom would like to come back to Canada, <laughs> but it's not going to happen. My dad's health isn't good, but uh, he's like, oh, I love the States, you know, like he's like, uh, screw the taxes and you know, they do okay. And uh, at least, you know, taxes, I would like them zero, but I'm like, okay, I'll take them as close to zero as possible. Uh, like what States do that? And I'm like, yeah, like you guys, I love California geographically. It's just, I was there as a kid. I, uh, we went to, we drove from Calgary to Mexico when I was like eight years old and, you know, oh, we went cool. through Cal and I'm like, I still have great memories of California, like the redwood forest. We drove through a tree and yeah, you know, like there's so many great memories. I remember going to LA and, but now I'm like, um, I wouldn't live in California unless I, I don't even think even if I had a billion dollars and look at the people who have a billion dollars don't want to live there. Yep. Like Joe Rogan left because he's like, Hey, I'm going to save $10 million a year just on taxes. If I move to Austin, I'm like yep. $10 million. Like, and, and let's just say you're the, you know, a lot of people who make a hundred grand, I don't know how they can afford to live in yep. communist California anymore. And it, it really is. It's, it's, you know, here again, I, I hate that. I, I don't like to put conservatives up above liberals, but um, I kind of sometimes think it kind of goes like liberal, conservative, libertarian, voluntarist. You know, there's you know, there's right. progressions <laughs> in it, but yeah, Cal, like my daughter goes, well, where would we go? And you know, the wife, yep. she she's like, I want to go pick oranges off her front yard every day. And I said, well, I guess we'd have to pick Florida because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cal. And I I'd be like, I'd be like, hey, let's go to Florida. I didn't, you know. Um, yeah, just for truck driving and like, um, just for starting businesses on Canada, it's, it's virtually impossible up here. And like, I, yeah. So, you know, to, to answer the question, like, what can I do? What can I do? Like, we, we, you know, I, this is our first show together. Hopefully have more and try to get these ideas out of <clears throat> like, if we're going to operate with government. Okay. Um, let's at least it, just have a constitution and that's it. People voluntarily maintain it. And if you violate that, <clears throat> um, I guess there's consequences to that. And that, that'd be a whole new show again, justice system. How do you, how do you deal with crimes against humanity? Which is what I, I always think there's, there's sort of a few crimes that you, you need to deal with, but above and beyond that, there's like thousands upon thousands of laws. Like don't do this. They're arbitrary, right? And I even say, well, government laws are nothing more than opinions with guns. Like it's their opinion to say, well, you know, you have to have this to get a job. I'm like, that's just your, your, your opinion. And you're enforcing that with a gun. And, and then again, then I get back to the point of my liberals friends going, why is Trudeau getting rid of all the guns? <laughs> because yep. their opinions are getting stronger and stronger and our voices are getting weaker and weaker. So, and I think that a lot of the problems that people bring up, if there was a peaceful society, if there wasn't a government, I, I had really hesitate. I used to delve into this, but I've, I've kind of stopped of what would we do to solve a problem or a, a, a challenge? So how would we get something we want if we didn't have a, a violence initiating group, a group to do so? Right. Well, I, I think that's just the, the wrong question. It's kind of like saying... Well, I want to get laid, but but no gals want to hang out with me. So kind of have to rape, don't I? Well, no, rape is completely wrong. Well, yeah, but how am I going to get laid? Well, that's not when I ask you that question, but how am I going to get laid? Your correct response is, dude, that's not my problem. But however you do it, it can't be by raping. That's messed up, man. You are not going to do that. Right. And so it has instead, to be voluntary. What we do is, it has to be voluntary. Yeah. yeah. So instead, we look at these problems, and I really hesitate to come up with ideas for how we can have a road or whatever else you might want. Well, yeah, you're welcome to want that. How are you going to get it? Voluntarily. Consent is king. That is the bottom line of how we're going to get anything. And there's no way I'm smart enough to give you the mechanics of how any of these things would happen. As a matter of fact, and I think it was uh, the, the former voluntarist, uh, Stefan Molyneux, that said this. He said, if... If I was smart enough to be able to tell you how we would do things, then that would be a very good argument that I should be the guy in charge of the government. But I can't figure it out, and neither can know anyone else. So 
we're not even going to work. That's going to be something that the free market can deal with, not individual humans. Um, yeah. Like no individual human. Individual humans deal with it, but not one single appointed individual human. Just can't be done. On a side note there, I was invited to his house for dinner. Oh, really? <laughs> <Seth Von Mullen. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a potluck. There was 20 of us invited. Oh, cool. Uh, this was in 2010. Oh, he was invited. a voluntarist then. He was yeah, awesome. Yeah. I was invited to his house and I was only two hour drive from his house at the time. Yeah. Um, and I, I didn't go, I started, I I found some cracks in him and I was starting to question him, but, but I was, um, I didn't go. I don't know why. I, I really wish I had gone. Um, he's like, yeah, yeah. Come up to my, I was emailing him. We were emailing yeah. back and forth and he had a list of 20 people and he said, come up to my house for a potluck. It was in summer of 2010. And uh, I said, well, I don't know what I'll make and bring. It's going to sit yeah. in my car. And he's like, I don't order pizza sort of thing or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I was invited to his house and I, 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 I don't, I, I don't adhere to, I like Stefan kind of pre 2010, but um, he, to me went weird, but yeah. um, now he actually, yeah, there's, you know, I can tell you more stories about him too. He, um, <laughs> do you remember that fella? Uh, the guy donated $2 to him. <laughs> This was back in 2012. Anyways, it's a long story, but Stefan ended up blocking me on Facebook and all that. And I'm like, eh, I didn't even say anything bad, but um, uh, it was a, it was a, I think he was, there's different things about him, but, but I do like, um, I like his Ron Paul series of videos. He made four videos on Ron Paul explaining how, you know, it was a good video. I did like Stefan. Anyways, a little, I don't want to go on too much about him, yeah. but yeah, it was an, Invited but to I think house. it's a good lesson. I think it's a good yeah. lesson because I, I think that these various, uh, what do they call it? Celebritarians um, yes. was, was the old popular phrase. Um, I, I really, there's some people like Larkin Rose, who I think is kind of at the top of the game in delivering for the masses, the, the word of voluntarism. However, I, I like Larkin when I'm in his area, we'll go to lunch or whatever, but he's not, I'm not a Larkin guy. I'm a Larkin's message guy. And if yeah. he changes his message like Stefan did, well, no, I'm not sticking with the person who's wrong. And I'll bet you that Larkin does a bunch of stuff that's, I have no, uh, I don't support at all. But that's not the part that I'm supporting. I'm saying that if he says a series of good words that really make sense, that helps me understand philosophy better or helps bring another thousand people into philosophy, yeah, I appreciate that about him. It's just like the statist you mentioned, um, the pro-government guy, Ron Paul. <laughs> of all of the politicians, he said some really cool, neat things, as did George Washington, as did Thomas Jefferson, as did a lot of people who... I very much disagree with many other things they did. And so I think that's a, it's a good reminder that, Hey, Stefan, man, I really appreciate all the good stuff you said. His book, everyday anarchy is one of the best introduction books on, on voluntarism that's out oh, there. Yeah. Huge appreciation for doing that for his Just thousands peaceful of podcasts. Parenting. Yeah. yeah. But at this point, um, I, I don't even, I don't follow him in the least. I, I, I don't like narcissist personality types. And so I don't follow him, but, I appreciate much of the previous work he did and owe him a big debt of gratitude for that. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, Larkin and I, we had a falling out though in 2015. It's finally like, um, you mentioned him. Uh, yeah, I do. But his, his messages, I mean, I, to this day, it's uh he made a video and put it up on YouTube that I don't even like the, even talk about the title. I don't even know how it's still up there. It's like, like you know, it's called when to shoot a cop. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I posted that one time and people are like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, you got to watch the video. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, I don't recommend doing that to anybody, but he, he yes, yep. Larkin has um, a different style of delivering it than, than Stefan did. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Like yep. um, right now I'm, I'm kind of like, um, I'm like in Jordan Peterson right now. He's, mm -hmm. a, he, he's about the only Canadian that, uh, <laughs> that I really, uh, I think is a good guy. Um, he's, I just hope he doesn't kind of go, you know, not so off the edge and then go, oh man, like he sells out and stuff. People want him to be prime yeah. minister of Canada. Like people are like, you got to run for the conservative party. He's like, no, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to taint that. <laughs> I'm like, good. Uh, Cause you talk about Ron Paul. And I remember Stefan pointing out everyone was now, now Stefan at one point he's in 2011, he said, 
if you have a friend voting for Ron Paul, support your friend by voting for Ron Paul. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. But, but you know what, but Stefan would point out like Ron Paul brought in more money for his um, constituency. Is that maybe mm-hmm. the, like wherever he was located, yeah. he brought in 30 years, he brought in a lot of programs and stuff for his area. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, he's whatever. I didn't think that was very good of Ron Paul. And well, yeah, I guess he did. He, he, he understood the voluntary libertarian kind of ways, but uh, still had a career politician of 30 years. Yep. So, yep. you know, um, so I'm, as we come to a close here, I want to ask you, and I don't want your answer now, hmm. but I'm going to ask you on air. And then I'm going to put in the description, three of Trevor's videos that if he it, basically I'm asking you if somebody's watching this this is the first time they've seen you what are the first three videos that you have made that you would like them to see and you can email those to me later and, and, and yeah. I'll put them down below but I sometimes look at that and I'll look at some of the the videos that I put out and I'll see one that a lot of people view and comment and like and such and and then there's another one that they don't. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's that other one that I really want the world to know about. So I, I would love to get those and I'll, uh, I'll yeah, you know, you know, what's funny about that. And I, this bugs me about YouTube and you asked me a screen, I'll send you one of my best videos that I love. I, I made, I edited and I put it out. It took me, what people don't realize they're like, it's 20 minutes. Yeah. But it takes me like eight hours to review these videos. Like people don't realize it takes me a long time to do that. And then on top of that, I got everything else I got to do around the house and yep. it takes. So I, I just to say, yeah, there's one, a video I really loved. It's got seven views. I'm like, that's the best <laughs> damn video. I've, and I'll send it to you. I know which one it is. And I'm like, yeah, it's the great. best. Damn. Now I, I, I have issues I think with YouTube just, I don't know if this is conspiracy minded. If they, if you say certain keywords, they suppress them. Yep. your videos but yeah I, i'll make a video it was a i've got one it's in my top 10 most popular videos and i'm like it's a i don't like it it yeah. was like <laughs> it was almost like a conspiracy theory video just something i heard and i thought i'll report on it yeah and then i make a video where it's a solid i i go upstairs yeah. after and i go oh man this is gold yeah and i'm like yeah. i'm like within a day i'm like two views i'm like <laughs> i think i made it about two months ago and i think it has 32 views on it. i'm like yeah that's just, I don't know. It's, it's hard. The ideas we talk about are difficult to, um, to, to talk to, like if, you know, a voters, so you call them voters and it's, they're kind of going, Oh, as soon as you start talking about, there's other ways to relate to people and yep. it, it is difficult. And, you know, I'll make, I, like I say, my, my channel is, um, like I just get a good idea. Like I, I do, um, well, since it, I've had people say we're not in a recession. I'm like, well, I think we are because I go to the grocery <laughs> store and um, I'm like $300 and I look at my shopping cart and I'm like, I got nothing. Yep. So, you know, I do videos on trying to help people on, on not prepping. I call it yeah. more preparing, but um, yeah. you got to prepare. You got to have the tools. And and at least it's it's like the expression I, I came up or I came up with. I said earlier, like invention necessity is the mother of invention. Yep. Like at least Trudeau's gotten me onto the point where I'm like, I gotta, I gotta store beans and rice. <laughs> like, yeah, I know it's yeah. the old proverbial saying, but I mean, I probably have 120 pounds of rice. My wife's yep. like, why do we have so much rice in the basement? I'm like, because it's it now it's going to get expensive. And it has the price of rice is like a dollar a pound now for rice. Yep. So I'm, thank God I have, you know, I got tons of canned foods and, but the, I'll make videos on that, and then I like I like to incorporate voluntary ways of doing it in all my videos. It's kind of just something who I am. But yeah, I do. But since some videos I make, I just kind of report on what's going on, and I'm like, it wasn't that great. And I'll come back and I'm like, how did that one be in my top ten most popular videos? <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't get. You know what people want is sensation too. Mm-hmm. Like, um. People just, they want, you know, if you come out with them with like what we're doing, practical ideas. And, you know, I think this is a great video. We we have had fun doing this and it's, it keeps people, you got to tell a good story. But some some people want to hear about um, Putin's going to launch a, a missile in three days. How to yep. prepare for an EMP blast. People are like, oh, my God. But if you tell someone, here's 25 items that you should store in your house, people are like, whatever. Whatever. Yep. I mean, and those yep. are the videos that people are like, oh, I wish I'd watched that. Yeah. Because there's an EMP blast. Over. Yep. Shit, what do I do? There's no power. So I talk about videos like that too. I just, I like to talk about how, 
you know, hopefully it's helpful in, in many different ways, philosophy yeah. and just, you know, how I got, I had a single mother ask me, you know, how, how do I feed my daughter on a hundred dollars? And I go to the grocery store. So I'm like, here's a list of good food you can buy. You know, it's cheap, but it's nutritious. And yeah. you know, always, I said, always have a bag of sugar. <laughs> I mean, but sweeten the stuff up. I mean, not, not, not to the point where yeah. it's going to destroy your health, but right. Anyways, yeah, I, yeah. I just when you ask me that question, I will send some, but some yeah, of them great. will be like, people are going to be like, mm, this one's it doesn't have very many views, and I'm like, but it's it's Perfect. videos that I find find are 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 nutritious for the mind, I guess. Yeah, that makes well, sense. Well, I, I have so, a a massive audience, and I think they will both uh, <laughs> go and watch those videos that aren't much watched, so you might get two more views. <laughs> I might get well, hey, you know. Um, <laughs> I haven't watched yours, but I see you had something on auctioning or something from years ago. An auctioneer? Or is it? Yeah, I was just messing around. It's just a little hobby. Like, I don't really do it for real. Just every so oh. often I'll do one at a, uh, you know, there'll be some benefit spaghetti dinner and I'll get up and, and do it. But I'm I'm horrible at it and I don't know anything about it. And I so, so, of course, because I don't know anything about it, I do a how-to video and it has you know, 35,000 views or something. And then I do something that really matters. And like you say, less than a hundred. So it's a, yeah. it's a frustrating challenge, but you know, I think when we look at why are we doing this, obviously we're not doing it to make money. You don't make money doing this. You do it because you think, Hey, I've lived a long time and I've learned a few things in that time. And I wish I had known those things as I went into my life. So maybe I can pass those on to somebody else and make their life a little bit better or, or, say something that they're going to completely disagree with and they're going to come up with a way better idea than I did and go live their life better. And so I, I guess for me, it's more about putting out some ideas and yeah. Uh, yeah. if folks want to enjoy it and learn something from it. Great. If you don't great, I've done my job. I've, I've led, I've led my friends to water and I'm not going to force them to drink. That's that's the thing. Best I can do. I'm not going to force anybody. I, that's, and that's what I really want to bring out the idea. Like we can't, we shouldn't be operating on force. And uh, you know, like I say, just let yep. me live my life unless I'm uh, interfering, like a crime against humanity and the big ones, you know, murder, rape, uh, assault, theft. I mean, these things have to be dealt with, but I mean, and then, yep. you know, then government's like, okay, we'll deal with that. And then we'll add 10,000 other things to that. If you go yep. five miles over this arbitrary speed limit, you're going to get a fine of $50 yep. or something. It's like, ah. Yep. It's, Amen. It's crazy. Well, thank you yeah. so much, Trevor. I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to speaking with you again sometime soon. Oh, I hope so too. I'm, I'm, I'm available. Same, same time, same place. Some my little cave here that i'm in so <laughs> yeah great. yeah like hey it's great it's a great show i love i love i love it i love to talk about this kind of stuff 